Hey guys, it's Tiffany from SuperEasyMath.com. Today, I have something a little different. I have an older video that never got edited. It's I had the raw footage in a file. I went ahead and had it edited. And this video is over two-step inequality. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Solving two-step inequalities. When solving two-step inequalities, you want to remember that your goal is to put the variable, which is a big fancy way of saying the letter, on one side of the inequality sign by itself. The inequality signs are like the formal way of saying the less than or greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to signs, okay? Remember to use the inverse operations to isolate the variable. The inverse operations are just the opposite operations. For example, the opposite of addition is subtraction, the opposite of multiplication is division, and they work the same vice versa. Subtraction is addition, of course. One thing you need to remember when working with inequalities is that you need to change the direction of the inequality symbol when you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, that's a little different, so it's just something you want to keep in mind. Let's jump into example number one. Okay, example number one. I have 2p plus 10 is less than 80. I'm going to start by getting rid of the plus 10, and after that, I will get rid of the 2 so that the p is by itself. So, I'm going to subtract 10 on both sides. This cancels out. I'm left with 2p is less than 70. Divide both sides by 2 to get the p by itself. Right now, the relationship between the 2 and the p is multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division, so I'm going to divide both sides by the 2. That gets rid of the 2 on this side, so the p is left alone now. 70 divided by 2 is 35. So what this answer tells us is to make this statement true, p needs to be less than 35. So let's say I plug in 34 for p. I could say 2, 34, plus 10 is less than 80. So as long as whatever I get on this side is less than in value, like literally less in value than 80, then that means I solved correctly. 2 times 34 is 68, plus 10 is less than 80. Okay, 68 plus 10 is 78. So 78 is less than 80. That's true. Okay. If I were to plug the actual number in, we would have gotten 80. So we just know that the less than sign says it's less than that. So that's fine. So let's move on to example number two. Example number two. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. This cancels out. I have negative 4p is greater than 40. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. If you remember, on my very first slide, I explained that when you multiply or divide by a negative number, and that's what we're doing here, we're dividing by a negative 4, you must remember to change the direction of the sign. So right now I have a greater than sign. I'm going to change this to a less than sign. So I'm left with a P here, and the P is going to be less than negative 10. The same thing happens. I can plug it in. Let's say if P is less than negative 10, then remember when we're dealing with a number line, the numbers that are less than a negative, if this is negative 10, the lower numbers are going to be this way and they're going to be more like bigger in absolute value. Okay, so let's say P is like negative 20. Let's plug that in and see what happens. So I'm going to multiply here first. Negative 4 times negative 20 would be a positive 80. Minus 7 gives us 73. 73 is greater than 33, so that was correct. Let's move on to example number 3. I'm going to start by adding my 9 to both sides. And usually I would say both sides is the equal sign, but we don't have equal signs. We're dealing with inequality symbols, so this time I have a less than or equal to sign. But it would be fine if it were just the less than sign, just like before. Okay, so I get rid of this, and I'm left with P over 3 is less than or equal to 90. Multiply both sides by 3, since right now this side is divided by 3. This cancels this out. 
I'm left with a P here is less than or equal to 270. Again, you would follow the same process to check your answer. I'm not going to check it this time because you're probably getting the hang of it. Let's move on to example number four. Example number four. I'm going to subtract 20 on both sides. This cancels. Negative 5P is greater than or equal to negative 2. If I have 18 and I take 20 away, I'm going to end up with negative 2. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. And again, this puts us in the category of needing to switch the sign direction. That's because we're dividing by a negative number. This is canceled out. I'm left with a P over here. It's less than or equal to 2 fifths. Whenever we have a fraction and both the numerator and the denominator are negative, that is the same thing as having both positive. So I don't want to write them again because it looks a little more cluttered. I also want to point out that it's okay to have a fraction as your answer. If that's what you end up with, that's totally fine. So the answer to example number four is P is less than or equal to two fifths. That was my last example. Let's take a recap on how to solve two-step inequalities. When solving two-step inequalities, you want to remember that your goal is to put the variable or the letter on one side of the inequality sign by itself. In order to do that, you need to remember to use the inverse operations to isolate the variable. The inverse operations are the opposite operations. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. That means the opposite of subtraction is also addition. The same thing works for multiplication and division. You want to change the direction of the inequality symbol when you multiply or divide by a negative number. That's all my examples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Did you find this video helpful? Well, you can get more help from me on my website, supereasymath.com. While you're there, you can pick up my top five math tips to make learning math easy.